the birth of Danny's dragons appears to be miraculous. She burns Drogo's body along with her petrified dragon eggs in a pyre. The magi Miri Mazdur is also bound to the pyre as punishment for tricking Daenerys into sacrificing the life of her child. When the fire dies down, after Daenerys too has walked into the flames, the sky becomes alive with the voices of dragons for the first time in over a century. A closer look at the text reveals that this event was not miraculous. This was, in fact, a precise ritual. To understand this, we have to go all the way back to the beginning, back to Illyrio Mopatis. He gifted Daenerys with the stone dragon eggs. But where did he get them from? Dragon eggs from the Shadowlands beyond Ashai, said Magister Illyrio. The eons have turned them to stone, yet they still burn bright with beauty. Illyrio claims the eggs came from the Shadowlands beyond Ashai, the place where only Shadowbinders dare venture. I doubt Illyrio made the journey himself. Dragon eggs are also extraordinarily rare. Before they burn them in the pyre, Jorah insists that Daenerys should sell them and be wealthy for the rest of her days. Daenerys recognizes the extravagance of the gift, but also notes that Illyrio can afford to be lavish. Still, three priceless dragon eggs do seem like a rather expensive gift for a young girl you very well expected to die in the desert in the first place. Illyrio and Varys were originally in league together in a plan which involved getting rid of Daenerys and Viserys so they could place Prince Aegon on the throne. Who could have predicted that this young princess would conquer Slaver's Bay? Illyrio had a hand in selling Daenerys as well, and according to her, he collected a fortune in horses and slaves for his part in the exchange with Khal Drogo. Illyrio orchestrated the entire thing. Why waste so much money on a gift to someone you are attempting to indirectly murder. I think the eggs did in fact come from the Shadowlands, but I don't believe that Illyrio bought them. I think they were gifted to him by someone from the Shadowlands, the same person who's been manipulating Daenerys' story for a while now, Quaith. The evidence that Quaith spoke to Daenerys through her dreams throughout Book One is almost undeniable. I've talked and explained this in my two-part video entitled Understanding the Birth of Dragons. At every point of uncertainty throughout the series, Quaith has appeared to Daenerys, offering cryptic solutions. In Karth, on the ship to Astapor, on the pyramid in Marine, in the skies above the Dothraki Sea, I think there is even evidence that Quaith was around potentially for even longer than that, all the way back to the time of Aegon V's reign. Quaith gave the eggs to Illyrio, knowing that he would, or perhaps even insisting that he give them to Daenerys as a wedding gift. Daenerys is immediately affected by the eggs. She sees them as the most beautiful thing she has ever laid eyes on. From that point, Quaith moves to the next step, influencing Daenerys through her dreams. When Daenerys wakes after her final dream in a Game of Thrones, she already knows her child is dead without being told. She kills Drogo in his catatonic state as a mercy. Then she sets up an exact ritual, a very exact ritual, one that could have only been implanted by someone with precise knowledge. They killed a horse, and over the carcass they laid three layers of branches and logs. They laid them north to south, from ice to fire, and piled them high with soft cushions and sleeping silks. After Drogo is placed on the pyre, Daenerys places the eggs in very specific places. Near Drogo's head, everything that he was, his mind, Another near his heart, the very thing that kept him living and pumped his life's blood. And between his legs, 
his loins, his reproductive organs that would have carried on his genes. Finally, she ties Mary Mazdur to the pyre, and their exchange is curious. You will not hear me scream, Mary responded as the oil dripped from her hair and soaked her clothing. I will, Daenerys said, but it is not your screams I want, only your life. I remember what you told me. Only death can pay for life. Miri Mazdur opened her mouth, but made no reply. As she stepped away, Danny saw that the contempt was gone from the mage's flat black eyes. In its place was something that might have been fear. After this moment, the red comet comes. Daenerys takes this as a powerful sign, and the pyre is lit. Daenerys refers to the fire as being inside her, just as Melisandre says in A Dance with Dragons in her POV chapter. She thinks of this as a wedding, a marriage between her and the flames. This goes further to illustrate the ritualistic nature of this entire thing. As Daenerys stares into the flames, they begin to change. She could see various animals and monsters. The fire took on magical characteristics. This is eerily similar to the way Melisandre's flame visions are described in A Dance with Dragons as well. The flames were so beautiful, the loveliest thing she had ever seen, each one a sorcerer, robed in yellow and orange and scarlet, swirling long smoky cloaks. She saw crimson fire lions, and great yellow serpents and unicorns made of pale blue flame. She saw fish and foxes, and monsters, wolves and bright birds and flowering trees, each more beautiful than the last. She saw a horse, a great gray stallion, limbed in smoke, its flowing mane a nimbus of blue flame. As the pyre begins to collapse over Daenerys, she can hear the eggs begin to hatch. The third crack is described as being as loud and sharp as the breaking of the world. The breaking of the world could potentially refer to the shattering of the Arm of Dorne, which was also the result of another ritual involving the children of the forest. After this, Daenerys calls for her children. Everything Daenerys did was certain. There was no hesitation. It is clear that she did not expect to burn on that pyre. You are my queen. My sword is yours, but do not ask me to stand aside as you climb on Drogo's pyre. I will not watch you burn. Is this what you fear? Danny kissed him lightly on his broad forehead. I am not such a child as that, sweet sir. You do not mean to die with him? You swear it, my queen. I swear it she said in the common tongue of the Seven Kingdoms, that by rights were hers. When Daenerys tied Miri to the pyre, it was less out of a sense of revenge, and more out of necessity. This is why Miri Mazdur is far more disturbed when Danny repeats her words, only death can pay for life. She realized in that moment that Danny intends blood magic, Daenerys opened her arms to her dragons. She knew that they would hatch. That knowledge had to come from somewhere. It is still unclear what Quaith and the people that she represents truly desire, but their involvement in the birth of Danny's dragon seems to be likely. Daenerys performed a ritual she couldn't have possibly known. A ritual that was who knows how ancient. I doubt even Daenerys knows exactly how or why she did what she did.